and welcome to Zanata Consulting's beginner series. This video is on Zoho projects and we're going to cover a walkthrough of how to create a project template here within Zoho projects. Uh, so my name is Tyler Colt and with that we'll go ahead and jump right in. Um, so a quick overview, you know, Zoho projects, um, there's a lot on the page when you're working on a particular project. And setting up a project from scratch each time that you need to do something for a client engagement or for an internal uh, improvement. If you're going to build a project from scratch each time, it's just going to take you a lot of time and effort. And so what we generally recommend doing is building out a robust set of templates that you can create projects from and then make additional edits to fit whatever you're working on. Um, so. To get started, the project templates actually live in a kind of interesting place. Um, so if we go into projects over here on the left, this will give us a list of all of our active or completed projects, but it's also where the project templates live. Um, so under the little drop down, we can pull up project templates. <clears throat> and from here, we can actually go ahead and start creating that template. Um, so first I'll just give it a name here. We'll call this a standard implementation. Give it a description. Down here, if we want to do anything around our budget or billing method, we can set that as the default for the project. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and create this and we'll walk through kind of what comes next. So as we've created this project at first, we'll notice that it looks basically the same as if we were looking at an existing project. So it's got the same list of you know, tabs up at the top with your dashboard, your tasks, your reporting, your documents, your milestones, and so on. The only difference is that it's not a real project yet. It's really just the baseline for what will be a project later. And as we look at this page, kind of going left to right here, um, this is the order that we'll want to follow to set everything up. Um, so a quick overview on milestones, task lists, and tasks. Um, basically, a milestone is a section of the project. It's really based on the timeline that we want to have completed within a particular duration. And so in this case, maybe if we're doing an implementation project, maybe our first milestone is doing a deep discovery. And we're going to start this zero days after we start the project. This is the first thing that we're going to do. And we want this to take no more than 14 days to complete. Maybe it's a two week discovery process. We're going to have a series of stakeholder meetings and kind of move things from there. So I'll go ahead and create that milestone. And now we kind of are building our list. And so let's say I want to add one more milestone where we're going to do our development. And we'll say this is going to start after 14 days because we want to do our discovery first. And maybe this is going to take 30 days because it's a little more heavy lifting that needs to be done. So as we're creating our milestones, of course, we might want to rearrange where they are on the page. Um, to do that here, we'll just go ahead and... And so now that I have these two milestones created, we might want to reorder them just to keep things clean. So over here on the right, this will be a common theme that we'll have this reorder button where we're able to determine which order we want to view these in. I like to see them top to bottom based on when we're going to start and when we're going to complete each milestone. And so the next layer of hierarchy here within a milestone is going to be a task list. So these are just kind of groupings of tasks that we want to complete together or that are related to each other. Um, so maybe the first task list is going to be you know, scheduling meetings. Maybe the next task list would be to prepare scoping documents. And of course, you can go on and on from there, kind of additionally building out what these various task lists should look like. And so now that we've created kind of the key task list that would be part of this first milestone, it's time to start actually adding in the various tasks that we'll need to complete to get things done. And so what we can do there is actually jump over here to the tasks list, where now we're going to see these task lists that we've that we've created nested underneath their relevant milestones. Um, in this case, again, I'm going to quickly reorder these so that we have them kind of top to bottom in terms of the order that we want to do them in. And from here, we can start to build out our task list. And so in this case, 
maybe our first meeting would be schedule initial scoping meeting. Gonna schedule a stakeholder meeting. And maybe we wanna schedule our development kickoff meeting. And so with each of these various tasks, we can assign who the default owner should be. This can always be changed later, but when you create a project from this template, you'll wanna have everything with a default owner. Um, any task without an owner is at risk of not really being done um, as it's not gonna get on anyone's list, right? If they're looking at tasks that are assigned to them. For each of our tasks, we can also assign a default start after so in this case, maybe we're gonna start after zero days. Again, this is the first thing we wanna do. Maybe we're assuming that's gonna take us about a day to work out scheduling logistics. Again, with scheduling our stakeholder meeting, maybe we're gonna do that after we've done the scoping just to make sure they happen in the right order. So maybe this is gonna start on day one and it's gonna have also a duration of one day. And then we'll follow that same idea here for scheduling our development meeting. And now what you'll realize when you kind of build these out is that it's a living document. So as I'm looking at this project, maybe I think, you know what, maybe this task list should actually be just getting the meetings done, not just scheduling them. And so we can always go in and make edits to these task lists. So in this case, maybe I want to call this just initial meetings. And now I can add a little bit more color to this and say, you know, execute initial scoping meeting as well as our other meetings here that we need to have. Now, the important part about logging all of these tasks is that if you do plan on using this for time tracking later, um, even though it feels redundant to put a task in here just to execute a meeting, uh, the advantage is that when someone has that meeting active, right, they can actually just check in, they're tracking time against it, they can take any notes that they need to take and keep things clean as far as the project goes. Um, and as you're kind of working through all these various items to get things done. And so next we're gonna to wanna to take a look at some of the baseline reports and so that we can kind of see how this project template is gonna look on a Gantt chart once we have everything done. So I'm gonna go ahead offline here for a second and just fill in a whole bunch of tasks and start dates and due dates so that we can take a look at that. Um, and so after this little cut, we'll have a bunch of tasks on the page. Alrighty, so now we've kind of built out the rest of our task list here, kind of walk through that we're going to execute these various meetings. And then we have our first task here in our second task list to prepare that operations document and then schedule a handoff meeting and execute that meeting. We've also built out our start after and our durations for all of these various tasks. Um, so the last thing to kind of look at, at before we jump into the Gantt chart is planning out work hours. So work hours are kind of your estimated amount of time that you think things are gonna to take to get done. You can track it in either work hours per day, work percentage per day, or work hours just as a flat rate. I prefer generally to track things as just work hours. So maybe we wanna go ahead and say, you know, this is gonna take in total about 15 minutes to plan that out. Um, you know, maybe each of these we're going to assume total amount of time emailing back and forth, sending a booking link, getting things confirmed is about 15 minutes. And then any of our meetings that we're going to have, maybe it's a one hour meeting, but we're going to prepare at the end and wrap up once we're done. So maybe we assume these are all going to take about an hour and a half. Again, this stuff just gets important in the long run when you get into planning people's availability and workload. So you can make sure that people are not being overloaded. Um, so we'll kind of go through and just quickly fill out the rest of these work hours, and then we can jump over to our reporting. And so now that we have kind of some ballpark estimates of work hours, we'll jump into the Gantt and reports view. This is kind of where you make sure that the project is making sense, right, based on the timelines that you have set and based on how things generally seem to go. And so over here on the left, we'll see each of our various tasks how long we're gonna to wait to start them, and then the duration of those tasks. Here over on the right in our Gantt chart view, we have a rolling red bar here for our milestone. So we kinda of wanna look at our tasks here and go, okay, are we on track based on our estimations to actually complete this within the milestone timeframe? In this case, we are. 
But we can also look at this and go, hmm, we don't have a lot of wiggle room, right? So as you kind of build these out, you want to go back and forth and kind of adjust things and try to set some realistic goals and expectations um, to make sure that things are on track. And so what we'll see is, you know, if we do want to make any adjustments here, like maybe we're looking at this task here and we notice, you know what, we're saying we're going to start this after four days, but really, if possible, we'd love to get that done earlier. I can always just move this up on the Gantt chart and we'll see that the start after has adjusted accordingly, right? So I can kind of move these wherever I need them to go um, to kind of keep them in line. Now, of course, here we're looking at this would be like an absolute best case scenario, right? Everything is getting done same day. We're booking things as soon as possible availability. Um, there's kind of multiple methods to set up a project. You might want to set it up based on a best case and then move things around from there once the project gets started. Um, the only other big section here to cover as we build out our templates is the document management piece. Um, within Zoho projects, we can actually go ahead and create a template of what we would want our project to look like, including the documents and folders. So if I knew that I had a particular folder structure that I wanted to have for all of our files in any project in a particular template, I can actually go ahead and create some folders and create that structure ahead of time. So maybe we want a scoping document will go there. You know, blueprints can have their own folder and so on and so forth, right? So I've created a little child structure here, which would then copy into any future projects. Um, one thing to also be aware of is if you create a spreadsheet baseline that you wanna have as like a template spreadsheet or template document, you can actually load that into the template and it'll be included in any project that's created from this template. Um, so kind of a nice little thing if you have like a pricing guide or anything like that that's going to come into play as you're working on things you just load it into your template and then it's always there for you to use once you actually go ahead and spin up a project from this template and that will just about cover it here for project templates um, of course there's even deeper that you can go on this when you get into task dependencies and that's going to be kind of our next video on zoho projects um, so for now, I thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful as you get started building out some templates inside of projects. Uh, if you did enjoy it, be sure to subscribe down below to keep in the loop as we continue to post videos like this, product webinars, and quick tip videos on YouTube. Thanks again for watching.